What the hell is brute beer? Got my brute beer. Welcome to America, brother. From Alabama. <laughs> we are a little far away from Alabama, but we got the boy Jason here and we're dropping Reed off. I'm putting this on film to try to make you feel guilty about staying here. Keep it Reed. Keep it Reed. <laughs> Keep it Reed. So we just got back from Lexington. I didn't film at all yesterday. We just wanted to hammer and get back home. But we are back in Connecticut and Jason is here because I'm surprising him with a new car, which is going to be the title of my video. Oh, I got a new car. Get your own video. <laughs> <laughs> So Jason's here for the LZ World Tour next week in Canada. Get a car delivered to the house and we'll be hanging out doing a bunch of stuff throughout the next week and then we're going to Canada. So we'll pick this up and make fun of Reed before he leaves because I'm sad that he's leaving us already. But Jason's here, it's gonna be a good week. I'm super excited. You have to bring that with you. I'm not taking it. You have to bring it. <laughs> no, I leave it in here. This no. Is my safe space. I'm gonna throw it out the window. No, it's staying in here. Jason See might want to wear it. I'll continue like the legacy. Real American. Yeah, we'll continue, continue the legacy. Continue <laughs> the legacy. <laughs> Please do. Um, you're driving back up tonight or tomorrow? We'll see. One of them. Yeah. All right, later, dude. All right, see you guys later. Hey, Gary, got you a gift. The top might not be on that good. Starbucks. <laughs> I was gonna get you something really American, like a McDonald's coffee, but how is it? Premium. Premium. Wow. You've taken over my shop, yeah, Gary. Oh, the Bellino showed up also. Oh, yeah, Bellino showed up. <laughs> Your teller is it's not gonna fit showed up. <laughs> we'll you have other ones coming tomorrow, so. <laughs> Should be all right, but. I, know, I need my coffee. You're cool. <laughs> I'm walking here. That's all Jason's been saying the entire time is, I'm walking here and can I get some coffee? Welcome back. Uh, it's a new day, obviously. I had to do a bunch of errands this morning. Since I just got home from Kentucky and Jason came and invaded my life, we have to pull the transmission out because of all those issues I was having the other day. So, we're gonna get that done now. We have a new clutch coming. Before you know it, we'll be heading to Canada. I'm gonna let Jason mount some tires on the new Ben Pack, and then I guess you're gonna, I guess you can put the fronts on, right? Yeah, we'll try. I wanna try a bit. Up some of the 265 just to see. Just to see, yeah. I was expecting more to be a straight tire. Oh, you think they're semis? They're too hard to tread with. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it's anything. A like, you need to good Yeah, no, I get it, I get it. And if you guys didn't know, Jason has a special car here. This video won't be out for a few days, so I'll show you, but if not, go check out his channel. I'll leave the link down below. Got Randy's car. Oh, Randy. Good old Randy from Eliminate. Got this car. We have some stuff we definitely have to do to it, uh, but. If you want to see that, go check out his channel because I have plenty of work to do on the E36. Let's get this place cleaned up and get to work. All right, 20 minutes of moving around and I think we came up with the best plan for Jason and I to work on our cars. GZX is outside. We had to push that thing out there. E36 on the four post, 32 on the two post so Jason can do stance checks. He's got to do some random suspension work, wheels, tires, alignment. So we figured it would be easier on the two posts for him. And since I have to do the transmission, the car doesn't need to be in the air. So I'm going to use the four post. This is worked out perfect. It'd be a lot easier if the JZX ran. This would be a quick switcheroo, but in due time. Oh yes. Forgot. We have the Australian corner Aussie of the corner. rear window. We got Luke, Jason, and then one of the YouTube. And then we got the fake American <laughs> corner. <laughs> you got TJ and Jimmy on the quarter glass, so get all my boys on here. I gotta pull the shifter out before I put the car up in the air. Help Jason do a quick string alignment on, or toe alignment on this car. I think it's, it feels twitchy, so I think there's something going on. But we should be good to go. We have a clutch on the way, like I said. A couple days away and we'll be on the road again. All right, we got Randy using the new tire machine. <laughs> Well, he's doing that. I got the E36 up on the four post. This is actually the first time that I've had another car other than the JZX on the four post. I know that doesn't mean shit, but the first day I got it, we threw the JZX up and that's been that since day one. So it'll be cool to work out of this thing. I think it's gonna make almost pulling the transmission a little bit easier. I'll be able to slide underneath it with a Viper chair, with the tools, work underneath, use the lights. It should be pretty good. All the leaves out of here and then start pulling it apart. So as you can see here, Something got changed and my camera is in slow-mo the whole time. So here we are rolling under the car to remove the transmission. Transmission is out. Now we are talking about how horrible the clutch looks because it's a single plate six puck with 550 horsepower. So it did just, it just did not hold up. Now, oh, we're changing oil now in Jason's car. And now we are putting the TE37s back on my F80. 
Uh, we did a little switch. This is Grant from the future. I realized I did a pretty bad job at showcasing the new wheels on the F80, so wanted to throw this in the middle of the video to show you how freaking pumped I am with how good these new wheels look. I had these on the car in the past, but this was long before my YouTube ventures, so I'm gonna show you guys how it looks now. It want some more in-depth information on this car or videos etc let me know down in the comments below it's one of my favorite cars I own it's an absolute animal makes 500 horsepower and it's a freaking blast to drive so hopefully on the channel we'll be doing some more driving videos with this car I want to take it to tracks etc we've just been so busy drifting this year that it's been tough but like I said if you guys are interested in this car I'll absolutely make videos on it uh, just let me know down in the comments below throw in some cinematic shots some b-roll baby and uh we'll be right back into the video good morning welcome back to the video uh, i think i left this off with us trying to mess with that funky flywheel since then we've had a secret project going on but we are picking back up today with an overnighted clutch from clutch masters how, how is it how is it randy <laughs> <laughs> you look like in tonight will be the night that I will fall for you. <laughs> All right, Randy's gonna start cutting Randy's car, and uh, I'll show you guys the clutch when he's done making a bunch of noise. But this thing is sick. Jason from Keep It Read, what are you doing here? Wow, you got it right this time. You're not filming for yourself, so I'll film for you. Yeah, no, What's I'm going on? The boring shit. Just upgrading the intercooler, get rid of the shitty bar and plate. Upgrade to a it's probably too big. Probably too big. Yeah. Um, tube sorry, and tube fin, and right? Tube and fin, two bar and plates. Yep. Tube and fin's mad restriction for the little turbs here. I was hoping it was just going to be like a universal. It is a universal <laughs> one, but it's um, a little thick. It's real thick. It's 100 mil, which is what you do for the big power. Yeah, it's like four bolts. inch. That's like a thousand horsepower capable intercooler. Yeah, yeah it's massive. <laughs> it's kind of annoying. Yeah. Because it might create a little bit of lag now. But yeah, we'll be it'll right. be free flowing and it won't ever heat soak, which is yeah. little turbos and that intercooler gives you mad heat soak. So if it's a hot day, all my power will be gone. While he's doing that, Chris is going to give me a hand getting the clutch back in the E36. And the one thing we noticed immediately was how much lighter the flywheel was. So I pulled out my scale and you got to see this. All right, so we got pounds and ounces. Take a look at this. This is crazy. 17 pounds, six ounces for the new Clutch Masters flywheel. This was the flywheel we pulled out of the car. Tw almost 25 pounds, 24 pounds, nine ounces. So that is a massive difference. And I don't know a ton about this, but I do know that rotational mass plays a massive role in how quickly an engine revs. Does that make sense, Jason? Oh, the lighter the flywheel, the quicker it's gonna rev, correct? So I believe that's gonna help on top of the clutch diameter being so small, that will help with revving as well. Since I don't have a crazy stroker motor in this car, the lighter clutch and flywheel combo will help it rev quicker and get up into the RPMs faster. This whole kit is awesome. It came with an incompatible. <laughs> it came with everything needed to put the clutch in, including a new pilot bushing, clutch alignment tool, etc. So when you get the flywheel on, we'll torque that to spec and then line up the clutch, get that in. Transmission goes back in instant. Let's hope this works. I am praying. All right, flywheel is in and torqued down to ARP specifications. I did put blue Loctite on these bolts because it's necessary. Let me be smart here and read through the entire instructions on this clutch because it is a multi-plate clutch and I don't want to mess anything up. We'll get this in and then we'll put the transmission right back in. We're right to it. All right, got the clutch pulled apart. I am going to clean these with brake clean. I'm not sure if I need to, but I'm going to anyway. I actually learned something from watching Sam it on YouTube and uh, I just marked the clutch here so when I pulled it apart I knew the orientation of everything so I didn't mess anything up so I'm gonna get this cleaned up thrown in the car you're good to go torqued Loctite and 
and perfectly lined up. So, how does it look, Jason? Oh. It looks good, doesn't it? Oh, I'm so fired up. Did you, did you weigh the, both the whole entire assembly? No, really? I should no, have. That freaking thing's heavy as. Oh yeah, and this, yeah, it is like, it's probably triple the weight. <laughs> <laughs> it is probably triple the weight, but that thing looks <laughs> not gangster. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. We have to throw the slave cylinder on, measure the uh, spacing in case we need to use any spacers, and then I can get the bell housing on and put the transmission in and see if the transmission's any good. All right, McCarthy, what did we do? So to set it up, we had to get the air gap sorted out. Yeah, so we had to get the air gap sorted for the internal slave. This is, I don't want to call it a universal. Depending on the transmission, bell housing, clutch yep. setup, you need to basically measure the spacing between pressure plate fingers and the bell housing, and then the area between the face plate of the transmission and the ball bearing. You need a little bit of an air gap so the throwout bearing's not riding on the clutch. And with like a race clutch like this, unlike a factory clutch, you actually have to measure, shim it, and make sure it's perfect. So we have like a, about a two millimeter air gap, so it should be perfect. And thankfully with this transmission, Chris, there's a bunch of inspection ports. So when we put the transmission in, we'll be able to see if we did a correct job, right? Thankfully, because a lot of transmissions, you can't see into the bell housing. So you, you would kind of just be guessing. So at least we'll have confirmation that we did it correctly when we put the transmission in. It's going to be easier sitting on the chair. You think? Yep. Yeah. Figure it out. Oh, no, we got to go down. We didn't put the lines on. <laughs> Imagine we put it in, got it all perfectly lined up, and then didn't have the lines in. <laughs> no lines. Uh, so we have like a two mil air gap, Jason. Ready, Randy's? Nah. Oh, again, oh, I just hit my fucking head. There it is. There it is. In. Completely in. Oh, the car's rolling. Hey, be careful. We're good. It's not falling out. You can let go. Really? You need yeah, to like Nope, it's got like five mil right now. Five mil? Yeah. Transmission is back in, all filled up, drive shafts hooked up. The only thing we have not done yet is uh, bleed the clutch. Other than the clutch, or I'm sorry, we bled the clutch. The only thing we haven't done is hook up the exhaust. So we are going to see right now if the clutch fixed the issue with the transmission not disengaging all the way. Yeah. Yeah. Woo hoo hoo! Yeah, it goes, it goes right into gear now. Sorry? It goes right into gear now. God, dude. Always trust your local bogan. <laughs> I do still think that I caused damage. All right, time to get the exhaust on and go take this thing for a drive. This clutch feels insane. All right, car is done, back together, and we are packing up and heading to Toronto, Canada for the LZ World Tour this weekend. I'll put the link in the description. I think there's tickets left, so if there is, come out, see me and Jason. <laughs> bashing doors in um it's gonna be a blast thanks guys for watching see you in a few days